The views and opinions expressed in Media Litter Sandwich do not reflect on the views of the network, station, studio, website, sponsors, guests, hosts themselves, anyone or anything else associated or even not associated with this podcast. Maybe not even the person that said them. In other words, do your own research and do not sue anyone over what is said on this show. We didn't even mention the right to bear arms. I wish I had bear arms. There, there it is. Welcome to Media Litter Sandwich. This is where media creators just, you know what? It's not even for media creators no more. It's just telling stories around what we do. It's kind of like the, it's kind of like the uh, extras on a DVD player or on DVD that no one watches. Um, <laughs> That's beautiful. I like it. Yeah. Um, so with me today, go ahead, Brandon. Tell me, tell me what you're doing here today. Uh, my name is Brandon Panky. I just saw your post and wanted to talk because you know it's a nation of people that want to be heard and not listen. So <laughs> I just wanted to get out here and talk about myself. Um, I had listened to a few of your of your other shows and I realized that you know they're all like well spoken you know intelligent media people and Aww, not, he, he's, now he, now you he's got me buttering me up <laughs> oh no me you're not up. gonna like where it's going uh, oh no <laughs> now he's gonna take a bite out of me well. no it's actually out of myself because I, I i was totally excited to be on and then i listened to some of the other the other episodes of like oh boy i don't know now you got a comic and it's gonna go a little off the rails <laughs> it happens Ooh, that's strong Video version is completely different than the audio version. But if you like the audio version, you can, or you want to see the uncut video version, you can check out the Patreon. Uh, you'll be the first person to watch, first person to listen, and you might get the uncut version, depending on what tier you're on. Or you can also go to dvradio.net and be one of the first people to listen to the audio versions on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's if Bo decides to play it that night or play the right episode. Uh, if he does, then you'll be the first or second to listen to. Um, well, second if, if we have Patreons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Get it together, so, Bo. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. And then, of course, then it goes live. And then podcasts are everywhere. Spotify and iHeartRadio. And then the video versions on YouTube and all the other things. So, you know, so MediaLairSandwich.com, Toten.com. Now, you've been performing. I have. So what what are you doing? Um, let's try to keep this at least for little ears to hear. But luckily, they don't know everything. We say aristocrats are going to think the Aristocats cartoon. So <laughs> I guess we're okay. Yeah, I did. I did pet myself up to make sure you would have to do as little editing as possible today. Because, you know. I don't want to hear the bleep sound through this whole thing, yeah. but uh, yeah, no, I've been I've been since last May I've been doing stand up comedy and uh, it's something I always like wanted to do, and then I just kind of it's <laughs> funny story I took the leap I, I like got all ready I found a spot it was in St Clair Shores not too far from me I like I like pep myself up for the whole weekend I get down there and I just can't figure out who I'm supposed to talk to I had gotten onto a Facebook group. Uh, the Michigan Comics Network that helped me, you know, find this spot. And I sent a message. I was like, I, I can't find anybody. <laughs> so I finally, uh, you know, it finally comes to my attention from one of the people that worked there that they hadn't done that comedy night in like six months. What? Oh, no. So all that build up, all that anticipation to finally do the first one. And it's, it's not even it's, a thing anymore. It's nothing. And uh, so, yeah, that was rough. But then. I think it was two weeks later on a on a fine Sunday evening in Mount Clemens. I did my first set, and it was uh, I was hooked immediately. Just everything landed right where I wanted, and it probably never as good as that night since. Oh <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. It was it was just I think that's that like that routine that I was prepared for that first show. I had run through like for two years, so I was just like, you know, everything was just right. And then after that, except for all the timely stuff, I, it, nothing was evergreen. He, he's talking about the previous president. He's talking about things that happened two years ago that everyone forgot. I'm joking. I have no idea. It's sad. I was talking about my genitals during probation. <laughs> I don't know which one to ask about first. <laughs> well, yeah, I know which one you should. No, uh, <laughs> so. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was it, it was funny too because that that show went so good. I got I got like all full of myself, and I went up to Wald Lake the very next night to do the same set, uh-huh. and I bombed so bad, like just just the first <laughs> laugh didn't happen, and I just could not recover. It was it was well, that's bad. helpful too, though. It was it was very inspiring. I remember driving home like sad for five minutes, and then the rest of the drive, I was just like, I'm so addicted to this because like I knew yeah. what I did wrong, and like it, so now every time it's just some something else to work on. Yeah, I, I, I tried it a little bit back in the beginning of YouTube, and I realized um, I don't know what I'm doing with this audience. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to bring a camera. That's my audience. And that's, and so I would go to open mic nights where I'm the only person there, or like the, the organizer and me. I'm like, I don't care who be. I, I felt like complete jerk because like, I don't care what these people are for. I don't care. I got five minutes. That's my audience. That camera. All I want is the applause when I start and then say I did in front of live audience. That's it. That's fair. And yeah, I, I, I still I feel kind of like a jerk thinking back on it. But honestly, they enjoyed it too. It's just I knew that wasn't my audience, and you can't really do that as much anymore. Just be, unless you already have an audience on YouTube. At that point, that helped. To help me build it, where they all went, I have no idea. But you know, it's YouTube. <laughs> it's, there is definitely something to that, though. There's some to, like, if you were just going there and it, it, it affects your performance. If you're not getting laughs, it's something I've just realized in the last few months. It's it's a really bad way to do it. Like you have to do it whether there's three people or a hundred people. Mm-hmm. You have to do it the same way, or like they pick up on it. Like I had a a guy who was in theater like break it down for me is like if you acknowledge the small crowd it's like it's like if if you're someone's over your house and they weren't like noticing that the place is messy but then you acknowledge the mess all of a sudden they start noticing everything like the audience like feels bad almost that it's a small audience and then you lose them so i'm trying to just (laughs) <laughs> just do it like I, I guess like your camera thing like just do it for that camera don't worry about what you're actually seeing or hearing yeah there's something too just you know if it's something like that where you're on the fence with it or it's you know that you're, you're trying to figure out if you're going to do this or not the, the more attention you have on it early on the better yeah now you were telling me you actually have you didn't call it a handicap but i'm calling it a handicap that's fair you you go into a room you go into a bar and you know not only do you have to listen to other stand-up routines but you have to listen to your own stand-up routine which is bad enough but you have to do it sober yeah <laughs> I, I, you know it's up to you if you want to answer why you're not drinking but uh um but if you want to go into a little bit <laughs> you're, you're, you, it's like you podcast and stuff you know how to set stuff up yeah no so last february i got a dui big big sadness but uh, big mistakes. And you this know. is 2020, so that was 2019. And I, I say whole, that. Whole I different I, decade. Yeah, I say that because DUIs, even in like 2010, are way different than 2019 because they keep getting worse and worse uh, um, even on your first hit. For sure, man. I, man, I, I remember talking to the people I work with and like, you know, you don't know anyone has a DUI until you get one. Then all of a sudden you're in this underground <laughs> like public you know, forum, and everyone keeps saying like, "Oh yeah, I got one too. I have two. I'm like, "Dude, what? Why?" <laughs> like, they're like, "Yeah, no, they just. It was basically a slap on the wrist." I'm like, "I am. It is. It's been 16 months, <laughs> and I'm still going through stuff." Wow. So, but you know, you, you can't talk like that. You know, you, I, I'm just happy that I learned from the experience and I'm moving forward. <laughs> Does that help with your routine? You know, you know what? Let me change the wording on that. Has it affected your routine? Here's what's very fascinating about it. It happened before I did stand up. Okay. So my stand up career has only been sober. Mm-hmm. And it kind of forced me to dive into this thing I've always wanted to do sober. And it's, it kind of took that as a factor, you know, away from it. And, something I have noticed is I've seen some comics have too much and go up yeah. and it's a, uh, it's a scary thing. I've, I've watched full meltdowns that were definitely like, you know, Bud Light induced. And I'm like, I know that that would have been me if I had started this sober. 
the nerves get to you a certain night and you, you you know drink too much and then all of a sudden you're up there not only bombing but looking like an ass <laughs> and it's it's scary man so yeah i uh once i'm able to drink i i i might try one beer and see what happens as yeah. far as cuz and record it too because you'll be able to see what you did it, you know like even if if this podcast was audio only uh, cause not a lot of people watch the video anyways, but me being able to watch what I'm doing along with listening, obviously it helps me improve. Like, why can I always hear myself breathing here? Maybe if I move the microphone away from me, like I'm holding it there, that would help. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and I have started recording cause even absolutely sober, man, I kind of black out during sets. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll come off of a performance if it was, you know, if I was nervous going up or there was a lot of people. I'll almost have to ask people, like, I don't even know if it went well. Right. Like, it, it felt good, I think. I thought there was laughs. You were concentrating on the performance, not the reaction. Even though you could read reactions, you might have been just watching, you know, a certain amount of people. You don't, you can't always necessarily see everybody or know what's going on. Right. And, like, your crowd work parts, like, those are the parts I remember. I'm like, that was a great part. I had a great time with that. But then that stuff that I've run through quite a few times and, you know, manipulated and have kind of a set way that part's kind of so automatic i don't know how it went so i did start recording and that is something that like like seeing it you almost can see that there is more than just what you say there's body language there's you know even just i I changed the way i did my face on one bit and it completely changed it and made it better wow it's there's so many little things that's kind of one of the things that made me passionate about it is there's there's so like every time you think you got it right there's another thing that comes out from left field that you didn't even think about and now you know that's something you could use to build so (laughs) drinking would 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 be interesting i would definitely feel because it would definitely change up your facial like the way you're telling a story in with your face, you know, you might, people might tell like, wait, what's that word again? And, uh, and now that could be part of your act. I have no idea, but yeah, it would be interesting too that cause everything in balance might be good. Cause I got to tell you, I'm so nervous still every single time. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, it's the kind of nervous where it's like maybe one beer would help with that, but Maybe maybe it's just good that I've forced myself to go through that that much nerves sober so that I know I can do it no matter what the situation. All right, let me take a quick martini break here. <laughs> is, that a, is that a jab at my sobriety? <laughs> no, that's a jab at my liver. Ah, nice. Well, I am finally testing out the foundation gin, which I wanted, which is a gin. I'm, none of these people sponsor me, by the way. I just enjoy the uh, the Detroit Brewing Company because I like their uh, railroad gin. So they, I saw they made one for a foundation hotel, which we record in. Again, not a sponsor. They're just awesome, and they host us. We are recording at Foundation uh, Studio in the Foundation Detroit Hotel, in downtown Detroit and right across the street from TCF Center, yes, that used to be Cobo Hall. And I said every single time because people are Dude. like, well, aren't you down the street from Cobo Hall? What's this TCF Center thing? And I always got to. That literally happened with me when you, you were like, we're by TCF. I was like, that's weird. Just say Cobo. And then I well, looked it up. I was like, oh, that is TCF now. <laughs> yeah, that's why I put that little slash. Slash, yeah, yeah. Because people will do that. They'll they'll put in their GPS like a uh, uh, Cobo Hall taking you to the TCF Center. What the hell? Is, no, go yeah. to Cobo Hall taking you to the TCF Center. I didn't know TCF had that kind of money. Just going and grabbing Cobo Hall. <laughs> they don't. Chemical Bank did ah, okay. somehow. That and makes... then they mergered. That makes more sense. I I never even heard of Chemical Bank before that. Yeah, so. no, that's that sounds like some Dow stuff. I don't even. Yeah, not, now that I moved, there's Chemical Bank by my house, but I've never even heard of Chemical. Ba- anyways, <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird. Yeah, breakout. I I think because there were if the merger didn't go through, it's going to be called the Chemical Bank Center. And frankly, I think that's a better name because it sounds like it's some kind of umbrella, you know, laboratory thing going on there. Yeah, like, you know, we got your auto rama, your auto show, and sometimes we do science experiments. Yeah. It's a good time. <laughs> we got Yumacon coming up. You know there's chemicals in there. Oh, yeah. So you're performing. I assume you're performing everywhere you can get. Yeah. So here's another weird thing is uh, I'm on probation until the end of May, 
and I do kind of feel tied down with it on, on account of needing to be in town for in the three tests a month I do. Um, also, just the fact that I'm not allowed to leave the state. So I can go do mm-hmm. a show in Traverse City, but I can't do a set in Toledo, which is a pretty good area. So I've heard Yeah, well, one comedy. of them, <laughs> it's funny when you look at the actual dis- distances. Yeah. Yeah. One of them several hours away, one of them is like 40 minutes. Yeah, I know. I could go to Michigan Tech up, up in the UP, but no, not, not right down the street. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's like there was a, uh, there's a, uh, what do they call it? The Cream Cream City Comedy Show or Festival. It's in Wisconsin, and it's the seventh through the ninth of May, and it's a festival I really wanted to like go for. But I knew even if I got, I couldn't go. Right. Or if I did, the hoops that they would make me jump through, it was it wouldn't be worth it. So I like I've I've been cranking out, you know, open mic stuff. I even like just in the last few weeks I've actually slowed down a little bit cuz I've I've kind of run myself into the ground with a 45 hours a week at the steel place and you know trying to balance it with just running around all the time I was just getting tired so I think I've found like a good balance now and maybe maybe it's good that I haven't like fully thrown myself out there and gone for you know as much as I could and traveling and stuff because I'm figuring stuff like that out Locally, and you're learning time management, right? What What's the biggest thing about time management around? Because that's it, that's something that a lot of us, even people that aren't creators, deal with. You know, because we do look at it as a second job, even if we're not getting paid. Although we need to, because we need new equipment. Hey, check out my Patreon. <laughs> look at that. He's just professional. Man, I never did that stuff with my podcast. It was just we we just had a good time. We, we never got to the point where we might make money. So, uh, yeah, I don't. I used no. The funny thing is, I made money when I started because I still had subscribers because that was before YouTube 2017 apocalypse started. Yeah, yeah. That, but that but would... now I love my podcast listeners too. I mean, they're they're they're, they're fantastic. We uh, love you. Just just interact more. Yeah, you just you gotta <laughs> click some some button that makes me know you're doing stuff. Yeah, it helps. It really does. Whether you know? it's a like, a, a, a thumbs or up, or joining a, heart. a Facebook group, or you know, and just like, hey, we want to know what else is going on, or or I want to tell you something. It's like I um, like I met Hannah Hart years ago when I did more. I was focusing on something else on YouTube, and whenever someone said they're a fan. Forget everything about her. She wants to know about you. How did you find me? How did you... Th- right. Like, I... And once that happened to me, I'm like, I don't care how much you like me. How did you discover me? How did you see me? Wait, you saw me on the news? Who the hell put me on the news? Right. You know, what, what's wrong with them? Right, You yeah. know, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, you got to figure out how it's happened when you've just been doing it with the complete faith that it's not. Oh, no, that's the video you saw? Man, Uh, I don't even remember that video. (laughs) Yeah, I drink to forget that video. It was a... (laughs) But hey, if that's how you found me, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's, I guess I'm not deleting it. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> not that I would do that anyways. <laughs> Deleted it the very next day. <laughs> and the video came back the very the next day. day. Oh, the we thought it was back. come back. Yeah. Thought it was a gun. Uh, we'll, 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 I'll change the voices there and we'll yeah, we'll sound like we're in sync. Just like them. Yeah. Theory. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and, but but time management. You're working forty five hours a week, and then I, I assume you're getting there at like eight in the morning, nine in the morning at the latest. And then when you're done, you're doing comedy acts, which probably go to like eleven o'clock midnight. Yeah, I've I've learned to speed nap. I've uh yeah, <laughs> I've I've learned that just because someone has said do it, like because when you first start in comedy, you're like, oh my god, like you, I could go do that. Like you want me to do that. You're like hey, jump on any silly open mic with two people. You you know you get invited to, but now I'm kind of realizing, do I have the energy to do it? Uh, is it is it worth it? Do I have? I've taken you know into account when there's a bit that I actually want to try and work on versus just going up there to do stuff I know is good already, like stuff I've already gotten locked down. Um, just making sure it's going to be productive if I'm going to put the time into it. So. It's all that kind of stuff. And that's the same way when you're choosing any kind of event, like when I choose a convention and stuff. But the question that, that I always have, which I do not have an answer for, is how do you judge if it's worth it or not? Yeah, that is that is some, I guess, perspective. Because it's always, 
it's always worth it at at some level. But yeah, I mean, if you're if you're getting back and you're just not you know not sleeping and start messing up at work and stuff, then I guess that's when you know it's not worth it. But <laughs> there's even when been, you hurt yourself in the day job, yeah. that's when I crossed the line. Yeah, oh, I put the forklift through Derek. My bad. I I guess I didn't. It wasn't Sorry, worth Derek. it. <laughs> Cut him right in half. No, Please say you work with a guy named Derek because we're totally sending this to him. I do. He's just the worst. No, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that sometimes it's you don't think it's worth it until you take a second look at it too. Like very dumb. We on a Thursday night, you know, work night, we drove to Grand Rapids and back to do this little open mic, and it was empty. <laughs> it was there was not many people, right. but it was. Uh, there's something to going somewhere where like definitely not, even the comics have not heard your stuff before yeah. it's it's just refreshing it's it yeah. like cuz once everybody's heard your stuff you kind of just feel like maybe it's not as funny as i thought <laughs> but then you you know you've heard everybody else's stuff what one, one thing i learned is you can't ever say or you try not to ever say that wasn't really worth it in front of anybody or even to yourself because you never – you just don't know. Um, I said that once to a couple people, a, a fellow filmmaker and an artist. I was walking around an event, an event I've done a couple times. I'm like, yeah, no one's really watching these. The, last time they only got like 30 views or I try, I was trying a 360 camera at the time. So I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. no one really watches the 360. I just you know tried it a little bit. Maybe I'll stop it. And the artist – this was like, and I didn't realize he watched my stuff. Um, I met him a couple times, I, but I didn't know he watched a lot of my stuff. He's like, no, hold up. I love your stuff. I love the 360. My wife that passed away, it has a beautiful shot of her on, on the 360 camera, and I have a screenshot. And whenever I'm feeling sad, I go back and watch your video because it has a, just a wonderful shot of my wife a few months before she passed. I'm like, uh, <laughs> how did you find it no. <laughs> whoa i got nothing right i i, I cannot I, I i cannot bad mouth myself i cannot bad mouth no and not that i was bad mouthing myself or, or the video before but i cannot degrade how much it's worth because that right there that 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 is worth so much to that person to 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 make it sound if it's anything less than what it is to him is it, it, it just, it, there's no, no reason. It just, just don't even bother yeah. it, it, it not it, get that out of your mind. Someone found value in it, even if it's yourself or someone else. And, 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 and that's why I try not to, even if, if an event, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to go back there again. I, I try not to regret going to it in the first place. Right. Um, it happens because <laughs> it's just a basic human emotion. Yeah. But you know, Try not to say it out loud or, 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 or things like that unless they really did something that, that, that's worth it. But even then, you probably meant something to somebody by going. Yeah, that's like, man, that is a powerful one too. You I know, right? You, you, can't, you can never be like, I don't know if this is, was even worth it or not again because you never know. That's true. <laughs> now, that, that slapped me on the face yeah, very hard. That's, that's emotional. <laughs> I, uh, I actually just few weeks ago i ended up going back to that place in walled lake where i bombed on my second night for the first time since Uh (laughs) uh-huh how did that feel it was uh, empowering but i just destroyed the toilet right before like i don't know what it was i don't remember what i ate but i was like it's a fancy place too and i was like this this toilet's bad and uh then i had to go up there and (laughs) just leave that out of my mind as i did my set and like i made two marks on this place tonight Oh, but, please say you included that. <laughs> I did. I did mention the bathroom. I was like, I said, this is the fanciest place I've ever clogged a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Which if I have to go here at this hotel, this that would be the second fanciest place <laughs> I've ever clogged a toilet. Oh, this hotel's not that. Well, it's a little hipstery, but I, honestly, it's a nice place. Um, it is. You know, even if you don't. If you're already in the Detroit area, I do recommend people stop by because there's some really cool art. And so, again, not a sponsor. They are our host, but not a sponsor. Yeah, you um, If what? they want a sponsor, go for it. But <laughs> Yeah, they're like, I don't know. I think the free studio is about all we're going to give you. <laughs> yeah, and very grateful for that. Um, 
It is a good vibe in there, though. It's, well, it's if you very, want me to pretend nice. to have a sponsor and for you to go buy something, you know, you're already shopping on Amazon. Go to Smile on Amazon. You, you could choose whatever charity you want, and to no cost to you, a little bit goes to charity. Am I sponsored by Amazon? No, but I am on DV Radio, and uh, they are partnered with the DV Farm, which is a homeless veteran. Um, housing, long-term housing, so you could go look up DV Farm. They do some great stuff. I know they need some money. Of course, I record this like two months in advance, so I can't exactly point you in the direction of their current fundraiser. But So you go find it yourself or just do what I do. Whenever you shop on uh, Amazon, you smile on Amazon, and they're my charity of choice. Beautifully done. I remember doing fake... It, like ads. Oh, I've totally thought about doing that. During our, like, when we first started, a, a, we did a MMA podcast, mm -hmm. me and my buddy. And when we first started, we just felt like there was a point in the show where we felt like there was supposed to be an ad. So we would just do something weird, like like the Schmitz Gay beer from SNL. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like H2O. <laughs> it's beautiful. Right. Yeah. Like <sighs> kites, because kites need advertising. It was just it was a good time. Kites, because if you're going to get high in the air. Might as well have a string to you. <laughs> yeah. What? Someone needs to pull you down once in a while. Yeah, it's very metaphorical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you think about the metaphors after you make the jokes. Right, yeah. That's. Yeah. You only have a tail because it's pretty, but you have a string so the wind doesn't carry you away. Yeah, it's like Icarus, basically. You don't want to oh, fly yeah. too close to the sun. You don't want to hit the ground. Well, uh, the string's only helping you with one of those. Yeah. Unless yeah, Egress, it has the wax wings. That's a little bit different because uh, the wind didn't carry him. His wax wings did. Yeah, which was a stretch to me <laughs> with the little bit of science I know, uh, just wax and wings. I don't know. I think you have a better shot with a Red Bull just <laughs> trying to cross the ocean or wherever he was crossing. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So what happened to you, you know, are you going to go back to podcasting or is that, what did you learn from that? Because uh, you did that before you did the stand up. Yeah, honestly, I, it helped me learn how to speak like <laughs> something that. Like this and then I, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. It, I, clearly it's still not working great, but it, it put a dent in it. There's something about being like anybody under. 25 we're just so bad at speaking because social media is taking care of it for us and then if you ask us a question in the street we're like i uh, t i don't know so th that was one <laughs> uh, of the cool go, things go go that <laughs> yeah go go answer person i don't want to <laughs> talk to so yeah it helped with hey, that. alexis can you help him out <laughs> alexis allegra like <laughs> yeah no it was like uh and plus it was like we were just such super mma fans that mm -hmm. like we were watching the guys that like that go on at five o'clock. You know, nobody knows. Like we knew everybody. So, and then we we, we were looking for a podcast that would kind of give you a breakdown of every fight, and there just really wasn't one yet. So we just kind of filled the hole that we saw we wanted in a show, and uh, it went all right. We got to interview some fighters, like some actual rostered top ten fighters, um, some media guys, some awesome. former fighters. It was a great time. So, yeah, it, w when we pulled the plug, it was just, you know, he moved away. I started in hazmat, had no time left. And uh, doing doing a podcast over the phone is just the worst, I'm sure you know. Yeah, so. it helps when you use, like, a video um, a video conferencing system, so, and you both have webcams. Um, a good internet connection will help. But just getting that eye contact and be able to communicate. Uh, I know I've jumped on a few uh, podcasts that don't do that. Um Again, barracks talk, uh, you know, where you got like five or six hosts on a show. Uh, but that they solve that by having a, uh, you know, an itinerary and knowing who's going to speak at what time. And you can, and they'll chat on the side because they've been doing it long enough where they know how each other work. Um, That's fair. Yeah. You know, the guest is all over the place because you don't know how the rest of them work. I know when I guess I'm. 
I don't know when to jump in because I don't have I don't have the history with each person right. like that to know what their tells are. Um, but yeah, video conferencing that that helps if you know their tells or or you might you know you might see them like do one of these like so you know they're coming up next or video version is different than the audio version. Yeah, maybe you guys are picking up on it. It's just like the comedy stuff I was talking about. There, there's body language to it and it does affect how you take what's being said. So. It's just another aspect of it. Okay, I want to hear more about this. I know you got a story somewhere in there. Oh, let's or see. Or you pick another story altogether. It's up to you. I uh, I caught myself. <laughs> the video did it. It was it was the first time where like taking a video made me go, "Oh my god!" Like you're an idiot. How did you not even notice this? I was picking my ear for like a whole bit. <laughs> like I was just digging in. I was going at it, and I was like, "Man, these are the parts they're supposed to laugh at." And I'm pretty sure I wiped it on my jeans <laughs> <laughs> at some point. Yeah, you can probably see the big yeah. brown mark oh, yeah, got just, deep in there. There's a bright yellow too. I should see oh. a doctor. And yeah, no, it was. Oh no, the yellow is fine. It's when it's dark and brown. Oh yellow, you know you got in there because yellow is the yellow. Why do I know this? Go on. So if it's yellow, <laughs> let it mellow. That's good. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I just every time. I, anyways, go that's on. great. I, I have no idea. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. <laughs> I all I know is you have to see a doctor and I those i need to go to the er i do like that if you were in the crowd you'd be like well he's healthy at least <laughs> <laughs> that joke didn't land but he is a healthy son of a gun that's funny it's like oh i need to clean my ears out too yeah so i did actually start feeling a void hey at least you didn't eat it i did not eat it it wasn't a booger i uh <laughs> i did start feeling a void about mma though like it's been just over a year since we pulled the plug on on the button the, uh, our podcast and so i had to do something and boy it's just the worst and i don't know how to do editing or anything i've never been you know on youtube but it's on youtube now it, it is five episodes deep it is called clipped and it's the new little seven minute mma show i'm putting out there just given ridiculous you know my opinions on what's you're happening. starting that's that that's you're doing it and that's the biggest part and there's other and if you find the other video sites, let me know because I just I, I I know a few of them. I try them once. I'm like, uh, I need to I need to keep doing that. It's a full time job in itself, and unfortunately, I need to sleep at night. I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know there were other sites but YouTube for video. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> there are so many. Yeah, yeah, there there, there are. Um, but I'm not going to go into all of them. You could comment below on whatever you are listening to. But yeah, I mostly involved. read the YouTube ones. Um, I'll probably see, especially on Podbeans or Stitcher, just if you let me know. Or go to do one of the Facebook, either the page or the media, media Lair Sandwich group, or start another conversation. Let's interact. Yeah. Or just keep going on driving or working or doing whatever it is you're doing. Dave. David. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's someone actually listening, Dave, but I have like 50 million Daves that are friends, so I'm just going to assume one of them. It's a very popular name nowadays. You do seem like a guy who would have Daves following. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> well, these are the Daves I know, I know. These are the Daves I know. Honestly, it was laziness. One time I went up to do a set and I hadn't prepared, so I just, after a few minutes, I didn't know what I was going to say, so I just started saying what had happened that day. Uh -huh. And there's some too just re relatable Trump's writing sometimes, and like for all of my material it was something that I was like really left field, like really unique, and it, you know people would would get it, but they, it wasn't relatable, I guess. So uh, this time that I was just kind of winging it uh, earlier, my girlfriend had and I had gotten into a little a little argument, if you want to call it that, and uh, I had just said, man. You know the reason that guys always lose is they 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 say things so indirectly that you can't like call them out on it. Like they don't say why are you cheap. They say why are you afraid of nice things. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, every guy in there was like, dude, I know exactly what that is. They started laughing. So I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to incorporate some more real life stuff in, and uh, you know, I'm still very new at this. So. It's it's a fun journey. What is a reaction you never thought you'd get? Uh, or you never thought you'd see if that one's funnier? So there is a bit that I do where I ask the crowd how many people are constipated. And I 
when I like wrote it, it was just to try like a, for a little quick laugh that leads into the the setup. And when I had wrote it, I was just like, that's just to get a chuckle. I have done it maybe 20 times, 20 out of 20. I've gotten at least two hands up. So uh, people are having a lot of fiber. Hello, ladies on the nice streets of Detroit. That's why you sit on that side. You get distracted. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's help, helping me focus. But yeah, no, I, I apparently people are backed up, man, because every single time I say how many people are constipated, I get at least two hands. Just <laughs> <laughs> try that military base. You could just say how many people are constipated. Oh, y'all had the MREs tonight too. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, a, a poop ready to explode. I don't know, PRE? Yeah. Can can you guys prescribe uh, uh, something something cheaper? I only got like a dollar. Is there a gum I can chew? Uh, One dollar, you can get a beefy Frito burrito at Taco Bell. <laughs> That'll do the trick. Uh, yeah, I'll empty you right out. Yeah, immediate. But, yeah, say goodbye to everything, including your colon. Mm. It's quite a consistency. Unless Taco Bell wants to sponsor us, in that case, I'm going to run for the border. <laughs> or, oh wait, I, wait! I don't know if that's a good line or a bad line. That used to be their line, right? Run for the border or for the bell? I don't know. Run mass? I don't know. I don't know. Run I miss. I miss the Chihuahua. They should bring I, him back. Yeah, he was great. I have a little stuffed animal one with a rose. It's like I think I'm in love. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the it's the it's the finer things in life. So you're on probation. Has there been a time where you're performing or you're, or even you're just hanging out backstage or talking to other people where you're like, oh man, this is not going to end well? <laughs> <laughs> ah, man, I have been asked countless times to smoke and, you know, had to turn it down. Almost like, I, I don't know, I tried smoking weed a few times and I'm more of an edibles guy, but uh, like, it's just, it never really did that much for me either way. So, it it is almost like a good cop out. I almost I, I might not tell people when my probation's done because it's they just le- leave you alone. They're like, You want a beer or you want a smoke? And I'm just like, I'm on probation. They just stop talking to you. They don't give you that like, oh what, you can't handle it, like all that stuff. I'm just like, No, I can't <laughs> and they're like, Okay, we've all been there and then they just leave me alone. So for strangers <laughs> I'm just gonna ca- tell them I've been on probation for nineteen years. <laughs> Keep it rolling. And uh <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know. There has been times where like I would go out with friends to a bar and you know, I, the first few times I just dreaded it. I was like, man, I, I'm gonna be the sober guy amongst all these people having a you know, loosen it up and having a good time. And uh I realized kind of quick that the thing I liked about bars was not the drinking, it was just because I'm funny and drunk people love me. And I realized I didn't even have to drink to to get those reactions. So I started just slaying it in bars. And I think that's honestly what gave me the confidence to start doing stand-up. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Maybe I, I want to need a story on that one. All uh, right. Uh, there's a little dive bar right down the street from where I'm living in Sterling Heights. It's called McKenzie's. I went in there because uh, – and I just go on my own too. I'm one of those lone wolf people, which – uh, maybe I'm a psycho. I don't know. That was me before I got a full time job. <laughs> That's fair. That that, yeah. was, that all lines up with my story. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and I would just go in with like, and I would hate those people too that would just clearly be there for a conversation. But I would be that guy, and I wouldn't like force it on people. I would go wait for someone else to say the first thing, and then just start basically doing comedy <laughs> against them. <laughs> so there was just this this older couple. They're sitting there. He's he's pretty plastered. She seems like a crazy cat lady. And I was like, this is perfect. This is what I need. And he just starts talking to me about how for his birthday, his wife got him slash for her coach lights on the garage and how he was upset about it. And at the time, I was talking about my great grandma who had just turned 100 and they were kind of eating that up. And I was like, man, and you know, she is just the sweetest old lady. And you know... She's so humble. You know what she wanted, what she asked for on her birthday, on her 100th birthday? Coach lights. And they just died. They started buying me beers and just, (laughs) uh, yeah. yeah. And then then, (laughs) uh, every comic will, like, know the one thing 
that's like a pet peeve is the second you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, I do comedy. They go, here's something I think is funny and then just start doing stuff. And it, he pulled out some uh, a full deck of cards, started doing a card trick and for 26 minutes, because I counted, he just botched this card trick and he was like, I don't know, maybe I'm not as funny as you. <laughs> I was like, this is... Oh, that's plenty <laughs> hilarious, man. I'm getting entertained. Right, yeah. No, you're doing great. Something about Jack going to get the queen another king. I don't know. It was crazy. Yeah. Although I did have someone break out cards on the show, but uh, uh, I like Steve, comma, the amazing. So you can always go back and, and, and check that show if you want to watch someone do card tricks on me or listen to someone do card tricks on me. That'd be fascinating, too. You just get the reactions only. Yeah, I, I try to describe it, and I, I was trying to mess him up because <laughs> he was more of a mentalist than, than, than just doing tricks. Right. Big waves. Hello, everybody. That time you saw him. Uh, yeah, and he gave me the, the eyes up like, hey. Yeah, like, hey, you're on Fox News right now, right? And we're like, not quite, but. No, no. <laughs> kind of. Uh, I don't know. The more the more I keep talking about the probation, the more I think it might have actually been like a blessing in disguise. Because I, I was a little reckless. Yeah, and you could totally use it as an excuse. Like, someone you don't like comes up, or you get the wrong vibe and start fl flirting with you. I'm sorry, I'm on probation. Right, yeah, I'm a criminal, basically, so... <laughs> whoa, 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 you right. want to turn them on now. Ah, uh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'm married, you want to go hook up? I'm like, that would be what you want from a criminal. Well, thank you for telling me now instead of in the morning. Right, yeah. So if, you, if you're looking to pick people up, tell me you're a criminal. <laughs> and on probation. <laughs> da, da, dun, dun, tsh, da. It's like jail. Smooth criminal. It's tsh. like jail, but outside. Uh, <laughs> that's just, <laughs> that's basically all it is. It's like, you have to be close. It's like, it's like when you're grounded, basically. Like, you can go do what you got to do, but stay close. If I call you, you got to come here. It's like, all right. So that's so much better than if you're on like restriction in the military. You're on restriction in the military. Um, you wish you're just on probation, but no, you're you're you can't leave. You're grounded. Yeah. You're grounded. You can't even leave leave your room. <laughs> Literally, your barracks room you share with two other people. You cannot leave your room. Only to walk downstairs and say, "Hey, I'm still here." Well, you know, I need toilet scrub. So you're gonna get in that van and go scrub some toilets, and then we'll bring you back. And then you go to work, and then you come back home. That's it. That's all you got. Just and, and it's not for drinking and driving. It's it's for whatever reason they want to do. And <laughs> I'm convinced that that setup is how you got barbershop quartets. They're just like, I guess... <laughs> I guess we could just start singing and see if we can figure out whose voice is best to say what pitch. T time before the internet. You know what? That's what we need. We need good acapella barbershop quartet. Yeah. I, I know there's some there's some uh, current ones out there, but yeah. I, I could see how that would get dark real quick, and I look forward to it. <laughs> I, I just remember seeing one at a redneck wedding I was at, and now I just I don't think we need any more of those. <laughs> I don't. Maybe it was just the wrong time. It was one of those. Well, when you preference it as a redneck wedding, I think we found your problem. Yeah. So, like, everyone's like, well, what does that entail? A redneck wedding, I feel like it qualified because the, for two reasons. The bonfire uh, started with three pallets and a couch, and the, the bride's dress was camo. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a redneck wedding, man. <laughs> it was just in a backyard. Was she pregnant at the time? Surprisingly, no. Okay. But, I mean, I guess she could have been. The camo made it hard to distinguish shapes. You, you couldn't see her. Yeah, yeah, she was like John Cena up there. <laughs> She's a, a guy marrying a floating head. <laughs> so was it green camo? It or? was green camo. Wow, uh, man, that's funny. Yeah, it was very, very old hunts, hunter's camo. It was, it was good. It, was, it might have been red tree because they broke out the nice stuff for the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> red tree, real tree. I meant real tree. Oh, I was gonna say like like the nice grandpa brought the real moonshine for that one. Right. It was a nice, like a, like a red stag and stuff. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I have done. I have been to a wedding where they're like, uh, um, oh yeah, uh, we got the champagne. I'm like, oh, what kind? Oh no, my uncle brews his own. Yeah, yeah. it was it was some of the best freaking wine and champagne though. I ain't calling that redneck wedding. I'm calling that a new contact. Hell yeah, man! That was a great time. That, that's ah oh, man, somebody. Somebody there made chocolate wine themselves, and I just remember them with this big, 
what looked like nitrous oxide canister. Why do I feel like this is rolling into the constipation joke? Uh, this is rolling into the Taco Bell joke. <laughs> it, was, it was the other end of the faucet. It was very explosive out there. <laughs> it was the working end. Yeah, yeah, it was like, you know, when you've been pumping that water pump at the campground for a long time, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, it was that. <laughs> so chocolate wine. Chocolate wine. That's, that's what it looked like, too. But not what it smelled like. Wait, how does wine look like a chocolate wine? Uh, it's just wine, but more diarrhea-ish, I guess. Yeah, why are you... I, honestly, I don't know if I could ever drink brown wine. It honestly, it actually looked a little bit more like chocolate milk. Like, it would be hard that to That doesn't distinguish. look advertised. Chocolate... Here's some chocolate milk. It's a wine. I don't believe you. Yeah, the milk and grapes is a weird combo. But that was the consistency, and it's surprisingly good. It's almost like chocolate milk. That's just, you know, a little strong. Hey, look, that, there goes the groom. Oh, yeah, there's the, the <laughs> camo over, hat. Well, you can't even see in the guy yeah. walked by, camo pants, camo vest, camo hat. Yeah, he was, he was, he was at that wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the, uh, uh, fish, um, the officiant. The officiant? Is it the guy that reads the stuff? That's what I assume. I might have made that word up. Yeah, it was an efficient way to call him. Yeah, that's what happens when you get old and you forget what words are. Words are hard. Yeah, they're that's very why, hard. That's why I stopped podcasting. <laughs> just started doing seven-minute clips of me yelling. <laughs> so you got any other uh, stories or anything particular you want to say, promote? Well, save the promotion to the end. Any other stories right, you want to say? Right. I guess uh, uh, I, uh, old drinking times. Uh, like I'll tell a story, and if everyone was like, man, he, he seems kind of together. I don't know if, it, like, I'm surprised he got a DUI. I'll tell you this story. He'll be like, yeah, it's probably good that he got a DUI. Um, we used to go and party in Grand Rapids. And <laughs> there was, it, it was, I'm that kind of drunk that, like, kind of hates the party vibe. Like, just people, people that are just trying to party annoy me a little bit. So every once in a while, I would just go and walk away and, like, go for a walk. And I'd usually come back. But every not f- always, not always. Every few times there would just be like Ponky's gone again, and we'll see him in the morning at some point. It got so bad to the point that this particular weekend, my best friend told everybody he's going to disappear, and there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> and I heard him say it, and uh, we were at a bar that was only, you know, maybe maybe a mile away, walking distance to their house downtown, and uh, there was a brawl. Everyone got put outside. And I lost them, and I did get lost, <laughs> and I did not find them, and I didn't show up until the morning. <laughs> so it, it, it was just stupid drunk stuff that, like, you know, I lost the phone, so I didn't have a way to contact anybody. I, uh, I, I ended up, like, wandering, trying to find their street, couldn't find it, and I was under an overpass, and this Uber stopped, and he was like, hey, man, I've, you know, I've... I've been Ubering around at night. I've seen you just kind of around here. I'll just just get in. I'll take you where you got to go. No charge. And I was like, thanks, man. And I get in, and uh, he puts in the address. It's right. We're, we just got to go on the highway for one exit and back up. And uh, we get onto the highway. He's going 35 miles an hour. And I smell the, like, whiskey on his breath. And he is wasted. And I'm like, oh, this is bad. Was, and people are, like, flying past us on the highway. I was like, I think I could roll out. I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. He's like, we should go get a drink. I was like, no, we should. We should just go where he, he got mad and took me back right to the overpass I was at and dropped me off. Oh. Uh, so I was like, yeah, that could have went worse. But, you know, maybe this is why I should stop drinking. So yeah. I, I that, finally, that's where you go, yeah, man, uh, um, there's, there's, there's plenty of stuff at the house we're going to. That is what I, I was like. You could drink at the house you're taking me to. It's right there. We're on our way. And I, yeah, no, he didn't have it. So I finally get to this house. It's probably like six in the morning. Probably better. He probably wanted your skin to wear as a coat. He was very Jeffrey Dahmer, the people Dahmer ish. Yeah. And so we get to the house, or I get to the house. It's like 6 a.m. And <laughs> one of the guys that lives in there, his van's just at the, just outside running. He's not in there. I know him. <laughs> he wanted Taco Bell. He started it. He went back inside to see if someone else wanted Taco Bell, forgot, and fell asleep. So I was like, all right, turn off the van. And <laughs> we, uh, yeah, you know, it was, it was kind of a cold night and it was toasty in there. So I turn off the van. I'm in the passenger seat. I just sleep. It's nice and warm. About an hour later, this guy opens it. It is not the guy that I think it is. It is not his van. Oh. 
Oh. Yeah. And I'm like, hey. And he's like, hey. I was like, I, I got to be honest. That, I'm supposed to be in this house. I got locked out. I thought this was my buddy's van. I didn't mean it was running, by the way. It was just running. And uh, so I turned it off, and it was warm, so I slept here. And he's like, I'm honestly glad you're here. And I was like, I didn't want to hear that. And he's like, uh, do you want to follow me in this van a block down and in my car, and we can drop it off at that house, and I'll drive you back here? I was like, that seems legit. <laughs> I, I slept in your van. That's I, I owe you this. So I do it, and he drops me off. And as he's like, as his tail lights disappear over the road, I realize I left my wallet in his car. <gasps> oh <laughs> man! I just had to like sit on the steps of the house and just go. Oh, you really gotta get your stuff together. And uh, about twenty minutes later, he pulls up with it with my wallet and a Jesus loves you card. And he was like, "Good luck on your adventures." <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I got nothing. I can't beat that. Yeah, no. I, I, I got nothing. Go ahead and promote yourself. All right. Uh, Brain and Pine. Let's see. Where am I going to be in a month? Uh, I might be doing all right in a month. I, I really don't have any big shows until the end of this month. Do you have a Facebook? I do. Do it's, you have a page or just your friend one? I tried to make a page, and boy, I could not figure it out. It was very, it was very confusing. Okay. So, where do you promote? Do you promote on your normal Facebook? Or do you have a Twitter? Uh, Twitter at Bponky. Very, very good on that. How spell your last name? Uh, P O N K E. Thank you for helping me. Uh, also, Instagram at Bponky. Um, let's see. I, I started a, a Instagram just recently called Stand Up Ponky. Uh, Instagram is weird though. It's it's very glitchy whenever I try and use that mm -hmm. one. So I'm not sure. I'm, I'm right now. I'm sticking to B-Ponky because I know it works. So I'll figure all that stuff out and by the time this comes. And you out, mostly go you know, by your last name, Ponky. I'm hearing from these stories. Yeah, I haven't met a Brandon I've liked in my life. So I feel the same way about the name Scott. That's why everyone calls me Toad. <laughs> that's fair. I just went with my last name, but that's. <laughs> I'm Toadin from Toadin.com, and of course, Toadin's Media Layer Sandwich. You can catch me on all sorts of podcasts and. Check out the Patreon. Look through the tiers. You might find something you actually like, like all the stuff I cut out from this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed our discussion. And may the algorithms be in your favor.